Let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth, may the meditations of our hearts, also of our minds, even our spirits, may all of these be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our rock and our salvation. Amen. Well, you can see where this is going. Life is a dance. Life is a dance, which is why we, as people of faith, we are called to dance. To dance to the rhythm of God's love. To the hope that longs to find expression in our lives. To dance to the whisper of God's voice before the world has a chance to squash it. To call it foolish, naive, impractical. For when we lose ourselves to the rhythm of God's love, when we let it take us over and lead us, that graceful movement, it begins to heal us and inspire others. And yet, and yet too often, we do not dance. Why is that? We don't dance too often for people like Michael and others like her that we heard in Scripture this morning. In our Scripture reading, Michael scorns King David for dancing. She looks outside of her window. She claims to him, to anybody who will listen, that his dancing makes him a fool, that he should be embarrassed, that he has brought shame. Hey, to himself, to all who have witnessed it. Nietzsche had in mind people like Michael when he said, those who dance are often thought of as fools by those who cannot hear the music. By people who cannot hear the singing of love's whisper in their hearts, where Michael cannot hear that music. That music that fills King David's heart. For in him sings a spirit of thanksgiving, a spirit of gratitude and of joy for the return of God's presence, not only in his life, but in the city as a whole. But Michael, she cannot hear the singing in her heart. For it is overfilled already with a joyless jealousy. You see, her father was King Saul, whom King David replaced as king. And Michael grieves the loss of her, her father's position, as Israel's favored royal family. David's rule means that she has come down in life. So that more than anything, she wishes King David to fail. She wishes him to be a fool, to be reduced in the eyes of others, that she may be lifted up. Like Michael, unfortunately, the world, too, it has a difficulty dancing to God's holy rhythm. Instead, too often, the world, it sways to a different beat. One that relishes power rather than a celebration of interdependence. One that values image over moral substance. One that judges rather than has compassion. And like Michael, seeks to see and finds delight in others' failure. It is into this kind of world, this kind of movement, this kind of dance that Jesus cuts in. He cuts into that dance and offers to teach us a new dance and a new rhythm and a new way of life. If we accept his lead, his invitation, if we surrender to his more sacred 
I liken it to a salsa myself. <laughs> Joy and justice, hope and healing begin to reverberate if we enter into the dance that Jesus invites us. As such, this divine dance, it is incarnational. It's incarnational because it turns love's invisible melody into a visible movement. A ripple of the holy begins to be seen and it spreads from person to person. But as scripture tells us, this dance is a little bit dangerous. It is, after all, in many ways, out of step with the world. Out of step with the ways of the world. Therefore, it and we, like King David, will most likely be deemed foolish. Just not serious with the problems that face this world. Which, believe it or not, when people call us foolish, that's a good thing. See, that's a good thing. Because Paul says, has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? God, in God's infinite wisdom, has decided to save those who believe through the foolishness of our proclamation. Which is a pretty good description sometimes of my proclamation. The foolishness of our ways, our dance, is how God will save the world, Paul says. That being the case, since God has chosen our foolishness to be saving grace in others' world, in others' lives, are we dancing? Or do we refuse to dance? Fearing people like Michael will call us shameful because they will not approve, will be embarrassed. Do people see in us in our way of living, in the way that we move through our lives, do they see a rhythm of love? Does it make it visible to them? Can people see it? Can they feel it? Can they hear it? Just by watching us. <clears throat> if we are to enter into and live by the divine dance that Jesus calls us to, one that is fueled by the rhythm of God's love, we, as all dancers, must learn a few basic dance moves. So are you ready? <laughs> you can remain seated for this portion of the dance lesson. After worship, there will be the non-seated version. <laughs> First, here's the first lesson of learning how to dance. We must hold on to each other enough, enough for support, enough to lend a helpful guiding influence, but not so much as to restrict or to confine or to force or to attempt to control the other. At times, if we are to dance well to God's vision, we will need to step back and let others step forward. Then elegantly and effortlessly, without ego, we shift positions. We must be comfortable then stepping forward ourselves and taking a lead as another steps back, all in a graceful mutuality. It may even be appropriate at times to step aside, to bend one way or the other. To dance well, we must be attentive not only to our own movements, not only to the movements of those closest to us, our partners, we must also be attentive to everybody else on the dance floor. And we must step lightly to be a good dancer, unless, as I am apt to do, we accidentally step on another's toes. And on the occasions when others step on our toes, 
We must be quick to forgive them as we hope to have our missteps forgiven by them. This way of being allows for boldness, a creativity for new steps, new directions, without the worry of failure. For even in failure, we are still in dance holding on to each other in loving care. And so within such an embrace, where can failure be? It cannot. With practice, within this holy rhythm of give and take, of forward and back, leading and surrender, that is where the joy of dance emerges. And it is a joy. It is a way of being that is so desperately needed in our own lives and in this world. And so, given the chance, I do hope you dance. Take this week, take time to close your eyes, to pray, to listen to and feel in your heart the rhythm of God's love even if it is but a faint whisper. And when you begin to hear it, to hear that rhythm, don't be afraid. Instead, dance. Dance like David did. Dance like no one is watching. Let it move you to unpredictable and if not graceful moments, then moments that are grace-filled anyway, so that in us, others may come to see and feel and feel safe enough to enter into that same dance, that rhythm of love in their own lives, and inspire others still. Amen. Amen.